Hello, my name's Jason and welcome to another episode of me painting. Uh, let me show you what we've got going on up here. We've got a uh, 20 by 16 black canvas and uh, I painted black gesso on the canvas. And then what I did is I put, I put this uh, masking tape along here because so we're going to do a seascape and that uh, will give us the ability to have a uh, straight horizon line, which is what we want in this painting. And then what I did, let me just show you, I mixed about 50-50 sap green and alizarin crimson. So it's about 50-50 mix and it makes a nice, nice brown. I probably put a bit more crimson in than the green. Maybe it's a little bit more, but it's up to you which sort of tone you want. Right, let's, uh, let's get started. So we've covered that with the, uh, the mixture just put a tiny bit on and we've also put some liquid clear on but again that was a, a very tiny bit so just to recap <laughs> I put some liquid clear all over here and then I put a mixture of the uh, sap green lizard and crimson and I just put that all over there so uh, let's get started with the uh, one inch brush I'm just going to go into some titanium white Pick some titanium white. And then let's go into a little bit of yellow ochre. Yellow ochre and titanium white. Just on the brush. Give it a tap. Give it a tap. Just to uh, give it an even distribution of colour. And now our light source is going to be here. That's where our lightest area is. I'm just using little rocking motions. That's where our lightest point is and up here as well, just up here, just using all the motions. And as you can see, it's uh, picking up the crimson that's up there. And if you get areas where there's not, not as much color on, just pick some up, just pick some up. Okay, just going out. I want this to be the lightest area, so it gets darker, darker, darker as we come out. This is sort of a, uh, sort of a sepia sort of look. Okay, choosing choosing X X's little X's just to blend it, just to blend that, and a little bit over here as well. Okay, yeah, let's bring that across. Right now, uh, just use the big brush clean dry two inch brush. I'm just going to go over that just to uh, blend that out, let it mix together. Let the crimson and the sap green that's made this nice brown just mix together and then the yellow ochre is our highlight, just lightly going across. And just hypnotize it. Okay, now let's go back to, let's use another one inch brush. And that dark mixture that I made, let's bring some of that into the picture. Let's create a cloud in the sky, the sky that I was looking at to uh, create this painting. It had a huge cloud, just using tiny little circles. Huge cloud that went all the way across the sky. Just like that. Just using tiny little circles. I'm really just, just putting in dark colour and thinking about how the cloud looked and creating all these little actions. Just spinning the brush. And just bring that all the way, all the way down to here. So the light was peeking out at the bottom. Okay. Go back to our one inch brush and let's just just lightly blend all of this just at the base, just to soften the base. Okay. And then just go all, all the way over. Okay, now then let's uh, just highlight some of the light is just hitting some of this cloud. Just here and there, not too much. It was just sort of hitting areas. 
So there's not, not really that much paint there. It's just an indication. And then using a two inch brush and just, just going over that. It was just here and there, it was some of the light was seeping out through the cloud and just breaking up that darkness. Okay, that'll do. That'll do for our sky. Now I'm just pulling off the uh, masking tape to get our horizon line. Now using the uh, two inch brush that I put the original colour on, just put some on the brush and let's, let's bring this colour to the horizon line. Our horizon. Okay, now you can either do it, do it like this, using the two inch brush as your, to build it up, or you can grab a uh, filbert brush, put some colour on, and then you can very delicately build your colour up to that horizon. And that way, your colour won't break the horizon line if you're using the big brush. It's up to you. Up to you. Use the big brush or the little brush. But that gives you two options. Of course, the uh, big brush is a bit quicker. <laughs> Okay. And if you're doing this one at home, take your time, really bring that colour up. Okay. Now let's. Uh, I'm stuck to the masking tape. <laughs> let's get rid of that. Now then, let's just push that up to there, and then let's start thinking about where our waves are. Let's just, let's plan this out. Let's pick up a tiny, tiniest bit of white. And I'm using this dirty brush, so it's still, it's not too bright. Let's think we've got some, we've got a big rock. It sort of lives here. Got a big rock there. And then we've got our beach that sort of comes along here. That's where they water, and you can see that. I'm put, make it a little bit brighter so you can see. We've got our uh, beach there. I could say we've got our rock, our rock there. And maybe there's a few more big rocks here, here and there. We'll work that out when we get there. And then we've got our, uh, we've got a big splashy bit here. And then we've got a wave. It's not not too uh, not too rough when I was looking at this. It was it, there was only a few little waves here and there. But I'm thinking angles. It's so when you're doing a, a seascape, you have to think of uh, where the horizon line is, and then and then you sort of come across to create your perspective. So if you imagine a. Uh, <laughs> A line that goes all the way along here. That'll sort of get your perspective. Okay, and maybe there's a little more wave that was there. Right, now then. Let's use a fan brush. And picking up some of our white and yellow ochre. White, just white and yellow ochre. Okay, let's start, start putting in some actions in the background. Now I'm just using little rocking motions. See how the uh, yellow ochre is picking up, picking up the colours. And just, just using the smiley faces and that the, the more more angle you give it, <laughs> the 
bigger the waves will become, the more fierce your uh, seascape will be. Okay, let's uh, bring that down, that sort of goes here. Now I just want some actions behind, behind before I put this rock in, so we can put the rock in afterwards. Now I'm going to pick up a bit more of that colour because this is where our lightest area is so we'll put a little bit more in, in here where the, where the light is striking the water. This is a very easy way of just getting a little bit of action in the background and then you can start coming outwards because a lot of your colour is gone and you can carry on putting the uh, movement behind there, here and there. Okay, now let's start coming forward. Now we've got a, a wave that's sort of here. Let's just put some of the colour on there. This one is sort of, sort of about there. And there's another one that's just come over here, but it's, it's splashed up here, so we'll put that, put that in there. Oh, about there, and then there's a smaller one. He's sort of, he's sort of here, something like that. Now, using the fan brush, let's start pulling this back, pulling this colour back, and just to create the uh, trough in the wave. Very lively. Just pulling that colour, and the reason we can do this is because of the liquid clear on the canvas and then the paint so it makes the paint slide. That's, maybe that's a, there's a wave there. And thinking about angles of where the trough is. Because the, the angle that your brush stroke is going to be will be the, the angle of the wave. You control how fierce this is or how calm it is. All up to you. Okay, now let's let's create this splash here. It's hitting this rock and it's just splashing, just just pushing up, just pushing up, and it's splashing and maybe a little bit more white. And we'll, there we go. It's pushing up and it's sort of splashing there. Okay, and then uh, behind there we'll just put in a little bit. We'll, we'll sort of see little bits behind there. And then this wave, let's pull this one back. Let's pull this one back. And you you want to leave this dark area. So this is when the, uh, the, the light's coming this way, it's hitting these trophy areas but it doesn't actually make it there, so that, that bit needs to stay dark. Now again, I'm just using rocking motions. Rocking motions. And then, uh, and then again, we can think, well, where's our light? It's about there, so we can put a bit more light in that area. Maybe there's more light hitting there. There as well. Okay. Now let's use the uh, one-inch brush and let's just let's just lightly just mix this up a little bit. It's very lightly, and then you can tap tap your one-inch brush into some of the colour, and you can create some little foamy areas, little spray. Has gone. Okay, now let's put this uh, rock in there. Now using the knife, I'm just pulling the paint out very flat, very flat, very flat. Let's, let's just clean the knife so I can show you. Paint's very flat and then just cut across and you get a little roll of paint, a little ridge of paint. And here we go. Well, let's put in this rock. This rock sort of lives here. And the 
over here. We're just blocking in our colour, blocking in the colour. And it sort of goes here. Lock it in. These, this knife, it's <laughs> once you get used to using a knife, it, you can do some uh, amazing things with it, and it's great fun. Great fun. Okay, let's, and a bit more sort of here. Okay, now let's uh, let's start bringing our water forward. Back to the uh, fan brush. Back to fan brush. Maybe maybe this water's starting to break a little bit there. Let's just put a little bit of foam on the top. It's starting to break. bit of white. Okay, and now let's bring this one backwards. This is a... Grabbing a little bit more colour. Okay. It's not as uh, rough down here. And under this area I'm using lighter pressure there isn't as much light coming from this area. So I don't want it to be too, too bright because it's casting a bit of a shadow back here and then you can go you can go brighter once it once it comes out that shadow. Okay. There we go. Let's uh, bring this one getting even flatter down here. Using little strokes. I'm dan dancing all over the place. <laughs> right now, back to our back to our knife. Let's uh, create some highlights just to go on these rocks. I want to keep it very dark though. Keep it very dark. Back to some. Let's get some crimson and sap green. And, Bit of yellow ochre. Bit more sort of green there. And just pulling it pulling it really flat. Just to mix it until you get the colour you want. A little bit more crimson than that. And it to be more to the red. Okay, pull it out very flat, cut across. A little ridge of paint, a little ridge of paint. Now let's uh, very lightly, very lightly, let's just uh, pull down, thinking about angles, thinking about angles, and let's highlight some of these areas. Just very light pressure, just like doing a mountain, just using light pressure. Okay, and there's a bit there. And then the angle that you go is the angle of the rocks. And maybe, get a bit of the light colour. Maybe the lights, maybe the lights hit this area. So you can put in a little bit of a highlight just to make that bit lighter. Okay, D don't overdo though, just a little bit. Okay, that'll do for that bit. Now, using the uh, two-inch brush, we need to create wet sand there. Let's grab some of the white, titanium white. Let's get rid of the yellow ochre. Yellow ochre, titanium white. Just on the two-inch brush and go for the lightest area. Just pull down. Pull down. Just pull straight down. right down. Okay, and then go across. Straight across. Maybe 
just darken this area here. A bit more colour in that end as well. And you can move, you can move this paint, you can move it, wiggle it. Just get a bit more of that light. Okay. Now let's go. Let's go. Let's use our, our little knife. I'm a big fan of the little knife. <laughs> let's grab some of the uh, yellow ochre. It's got a little bit of the uh, brown mixture. Let's make a bigger pile than that. Okay. So we've got yellow ochre. We've got some white. We've got some of the uh, crimson and sap green. Just a few colours, and let's get a little roll of paint, a little roll of paint, and let's start just pushing very hard. Let's put in the indication of where the water is coming up on the beach. And then of course, you need to go darker as you're coming out, where there's not as much light. Here. Okay, and you're just pushing, pushing very hard, pushing very hard, and then uh, using your fan brush, you can just pull that back, pull that back, just to give it the indication that it's flat. And also, while we've got the fan brush, maybe there's some water sort of going up towards the rocks here and there. You can just put little splashes and this movement just to make those rocks look like they're part of the picture. Okay, let's let's do another. Let's do another one of those. Let's show you that bit again. So cut across, little roll of paint, and let's do another one. There's another one there. So you're just pushing very, very hard. It goes to about there. Maybe that. Maybe that goes to about there. And again, you get grab the fan brush, pull it back, pull it back. Okay. Now let's uh, maybe there's there was a rock. There's another rock there. Let's grab some crimson, some sap green, crimson, sap green, a bit more crimson. Okay, there we go. That's our dark again. Crimson and sap green. Cut across. Little roll of paint, and we got some. There's another rock. He's big. He lives out here. He's out there, just lobbing in the paint. Just blocking it in. Okay, and then uh, grab a little bit of the highlight colour, very lightly. It's just, uh, it sort of falls down there. Like that, and then just grab a little bit and pull that, and then maybe the light ching, is just striking here, but it's picking up a bit of light there. Very light pressure, however you want it to be. You can, uh, you can do all sorts. A bit more dark there, a bit more dark. Okay. And now get the uh, liner brush, the liner brush, and then you can start adding all the little details. Details. Now I'm just going to use a little bit of liquid clear, a little bit of liquid clear, and go into some. Let's go into this color. Let's get a bit more of the white, a bit more of the white, just to lighten it a little bit. And I'm spinning my bristles, spinning my bristles. 
Okay, so now we're at this light area, we can start putting in some little highlights and details into where the light, where the light is hitting back here. But you can, it's totally up to you how you want this seascape. You can make it really big and fiery, or you can make it soft and just a casual <laughs> seascape. It's up to you. It all depends on your mood. If you're in a fiery mood, then you'll paint a fiery looking painting. If you're in a calm, happy mood, you'll make a calm, happy painting. Okay, and then you could start putting in all kinds of little detail. All areas where there's where the water will do us. <laughs> there's a little wave there. But you, know, you can do you can do all kinds of little things. Okay. Okay, this is about Let's, let's say this one's finished. Let's just go into this white again and let's uh, give it a little, little signature. Let's sign it just above this rock. Oh, J, B, and just cross that and a little bit. There we go, it's a uh, fun little painting. I think you'll enjoy it. And uh, thanks very much for watching and I'd like to thank everyone that's been liking my paintings and subscribing. It's been absolutely amazing response and um, it does good things for me. <laughs> so thanks very much for watching and I uh, hope to see you again. Cheers.